I literally had to earn the money I needed to keep me and my daughter in my home and food on her table. Trick or treat! That was exceptionally creepy, and welcome back to the Wild Business Growth Podcast, presented by Hippo Direct. This is your place to hear from a new entrepreneur or innovator every single Wednesday morning who's turning wild ideas into wild growth. I'm your host, Max Brandstetter, digital marketing due to Hippo Direct, and you can email me at max at hippodirect.com for help using your podcast as a marketing tool. This is episode number 66, and it is around Halloween, so of course we have something spooky for you. What is spookier? than not being able to grow your email list. I know you're actually terrified now, but don't fear because today we have you covered. Today's guest is Teresa Heath Waring, and she is one of the top social media experts in the UK. She contributes to Social Media Examiner, she has a fabulous TEDx talk, and she hosts the amazing Marketing That Converts podcast, where she's interviewed top marketers like Amy Porterfield and Pat Flynn. She might as well be the queen of lead magnets as she truly knows how to build your email list and convert those leads. So it's time to put on that costume, and if you're listening to this not on Halloween, just throw in some mouse ears anyway and call it a day. It's Teresa, and she's a treat. Enjoy the show. Alrighty, we are here with the THW. (laughs) <laughs> Teresa <laughs> Heath Waring, who is usually from across the pond, but is actually recording from LA today. So you are just all over the world. How the heck are you doing, Teresa? I am really good. Thank you. And super happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. This has been really, really cool connecting. And you are an expert in all things social media and marketing and beyond and beyond and obviously travel as well. So we're going to dive into a lot of that. But To start off here, there's one question that I have been dying to ask you. So, you know, drum roll, please. (laughs) You had Pat Flynn and Amy Porterfield on your podcast in back-to-back weeks. So how the hell did you do that? (laughs) (laughs) And you know what? The other cool thing was they were my first guests. Yes. I, uh, when I started my podcast, I was talking to, I saw Pat Flynn at a conference and once someone asked a question about how do you get amazing people on your podcast and him and Johnny Dumas said the same thing in the sense of first off you don't get people on straight away you do your own podcast for a bit and then you get people on and then they were like we'll build a relationship so and, and Pat actually said take them out for a coffee now I'd been very fortunate that I had been at an event with Pat where I spoke and he spoke so we had met each other but I took what he said and I sent him a DM via Instagram video DM and I said hey Pat you know I wanted to connect he said the way to connect is to have a coffee together well that's easy but I'm five and a half thousand miles away. So I'm going to (laughs) fly over to San Diego and I'm going to take you for a coffee. Will you meet me? And obviously, bless him, it's almost like he couldn't say no, could he? So I went over there and I did the same with Amy Porterfield. And again, I'd met her a couple of times by that point. And I did the same with her and both of them were so generous. They gave me, well, they both said, right, we've got an hour separately, obviously. And um, and I ended up chatting to them for like two hours. I went to Pat's studio and I thought to myself, if this goes well, when I get back to the UK, I'm going to ask them if they'll come on the podcast. And you know what? I didn't even have to ask. We sat having coffee and they're like, how's it going? How's the podcast going? And I said, good. I said, but I've not interviewed anybody yet and they were like why is that and both almost said exactly the same thing and I said I'm scared what if I ask people and they say no and they were like do you know what if I'm on your list then I'd more than happy come on so it was a really slow gentle way of getting it but I got it and then of course you get Amy and Pat on and suddenly the world's your oyster and this week I've just had um the episode that's just come out is Michael Hyatt yes was listening to that amazing Oh, and he was amazing. And the other thing is these people are, they're just a dream to interview because they've, they know what they're doing. They've done it so many times and they just know the score and even things like their equipment's good and their sound quality's good and they know not to move and rattle things. And so, yeah, they were just, they were awesome. I love them. So, so good. 
So you're using your your long distance, let's we'll call it a long distance marketing relationship. <laughs> you're using your connections and your long distance really as an advantage for you. So that's really, really cool. Yeah. And and do you know what? I stand out because obviously well, when I first started coming over here, which is probably three, four years ago, there wasn't many British people coming over. And I don't mean generally in the world, obviously. I mean, <laughs> for like conferences and, you know, meetups and things, because obviously right. the investment for us to come over is huge. It costs, you know, I don't know, about a thousand pounds, maybe for a flight, hotels, then when you're over here, are probably another good thousand, maybe two thousand pounds by the time you're staying in it so it's not cheap and I for me I just thought it's totally worth that investment because and isn't this funny that we're talking about social media but what's funny is as amazing social media is and it is amazing and obviously that's how I first connected with these guys there's nothing like sitting in a room with someone and to actually look them in the eye and speak to them and start building that relationship so for me even though it was a big cost for me and it was a big expense in terms of time out of my business it actually did my business wonders so so that's you in a nutshell i mean you just get coffee with the pat flings and the amy porterfields and the michael hyatts of the world like you know (laughs) just any chance you get but i want to i want to dive back before that so years you know you've been in marketing for 12 13 years 15 years now i'm very old 15 uh well (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> t- t- take that back. So, so back when you were about age two, 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> what were you up to before you got into the marketing world? Because that had to look pretty different. So, to be honest, I well, do you know what? When when I first sort of left college, I actually was like a nursery nurse, which is really funny. So, I looked after children, and then I decided, you know what? I think I want to do something a bit more than this, and I like the business side. So, I went to university, started doing a business degree, and then ended up doing specialising in marketing, and and marketing was just my passion and then from then on I've always worked in marketing various different roles various different companies I've had the pleasure of running corporate marketing for Land Rover UK and then I've also worked for teeny tiny businesses that you had to do everything yourself so I've always been in that marketing space and boy has it changed it's like what I did at university is nothing like I do now and you mentioned nursing I know it's a little bit different than marketing, <laughs> but what can, what can you take from that nursing world that you think has helped you as you've become a, a professional marketer and an entrepreneur? I think there's different things like one, humans like to connect with humans and they they like that touch and that conversation. And also definitely the your personality is a huge, huge part of it. So I loved connecting with people. I loved even back then, you know, having conversations with people, getting to know them, getting to understand them. And I think for me, that's just carried on through. That's still what I do today. It might be on a larger scale. I might do it in a different way, but it's still all about getting to know who your customers are, getting to know who your audience is, knowing what they need from you and trying to help them. So I just, I think, like I said, there's some kind of basic human things that we all need and that's one of them. It is. Yeah. And it's so relevant. And, and you're helping so many people in the social media and the marketing world today. So mm-hmm. with, with your with your business, with your, your marketing company, how did that start? Like, when did that turn from, oh, I'm just doing marketing to I'm actually going to start a full time business and be an entrepreneur and, and help other people grow their business this way? Okay, so First off, I need to say, I made all the mistakes, okay? So I, <laughs> well, thank you for making them because I haven't made any, so. I'm oh, just that's excellent. Well done, you. <laughs> so I decided, um, well, the funny thing was I almost ne- didn't decide to have my own business. I'd worked in marketing, like I said, for about 10 years at this point, And I'd gone through a divorce. My husband had left me. I'd got my daughter who was about three. I'd got a house that I was running. I'd got a car that I was paying for. I was looking after my daughter and I, and I had, it's tough going through something like that. And work was great. And then it started to get a bit difficult. And I thought to myself, do you know what? I don't think I I want to be happy. That's like a really important thing to me. Let's just focus on being happy. Yeah. So I thought to myself, do you know what? I don't want to stay in this job. I'm going to have my notice in, but I'm going to give them eight weeks notice and I'm going to find another job not one point did I think I'm going to do this on my own. And I got about three weeks into my eight week notice 
and nothing was coming forth. Like I literally was sat there thinking, oh my goodness, this isn't going to happen. I'm not going to get a job. So I started thinking about, okay, what if I don't get a job? What is my option? So I started looking at the fact of, could I do this on my own? Because I'd just worked in an agency for a few years and had bought on all these new clients, had these amazing client relationships. And I thought, well, if I can do it for them, maybe I can do it for me. And I started thinking about it and my boss got sort of heard of it and decided to get rid of me there and then. And I had one week, no savings, no husband, no rich parents. I literally had to earn the money I needed to keep me and my daughter in my home and food on her table in order for me to keep going and somehow did it like I well there's no bigger driver than I need to feed my three-year-old but yeah just, <laughs> I can imagine but I, I joke that I'm like an accidental entrepreneur because I was never actually I never intended doing this but now oh that's it I could never go back to a job I'd be a nightmare employee I'd just be awful <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we were going to hire you right after this interview too. Uh, Darn it. Oh man. <laughs> but, but that's, I mean, I mean, that is, so that has to be a crazy driver, obviously, you know, having, having no money, et cetera, and needing to feed your three-year-old. Well, what was the step you took after that? So like, how did you stay focused on actually bringing in money and bringing in clients and starting that business? Do you know what? I think in those early days, I literally did what everybody talks about doing, which was hustle. I literally was at every networking event. I rocked up to every breakfast meeting. I spoke to everybody and I was nice. You know, I know that sounds a completely ridiculous way to talk about a strategy, but actually I think there's so many people who are in business and, and especially where I was at the time. And they were very kind of like, just fighting to all be brilliant themselves. And because I'd always kind of looked to, the guys over here and in the States, and they have a very different way of doing business over here. I realized that actually just being nice and giving away some free information and helping people was a really good strategy. And yeah, I just managed to somehow get a client after client after client. And within three years, I'd got a team of six and we were looking after all these clients and it was just phenomenal. I, I kind of didn't even know how we got to that point, if I'm honest. Well, you got it at such a, a key time in your life. And so it's just really, it's inspiring that you were able to do that and capitalize on that versus just be overwhelmed and just didn't know where to go when you're in that, in that tough and, you know, yeah. back against the yeah. wall situation. And I think in all honesty, I think if I hadn't have been in that situation, it wouldn't have worked. Like there is no mm. greater driver than I literally have to earn money. And don't get me wrong. Like I said, I made loads of mistakes. I took on lots <laughs> of work that was not really for me and I wouldn't want to do that again but at the time you do what you have to do and I did and I learned lots of lessons and I'm in a very different place now which is awesome. So I want to talk about aspects of marketing that convert. So in that realm there's something that is really really key these days and it sounds counterintuitive but obviously social media is very very important. But what arguably is more important is getting your prospects and leads and fans off social media and onto your email list and onto your website. Mm -hmm. So can you speak about, to start us off here, why that is so important, kind of, kind of the anti-social media here? Yeah. And do you know what? That's funny because of what I do and how I'm known that I'm encouraging people to take people off social media. But what I'm encouraging. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Jeez. Is, yeah. Well, that way you've just done all those years. Forget it. Um, no, no, absolutely not. So I love social media. It's an amazing tool. It's just brilliant. We can do things on there. We can reach out to customers that we could never have done in the past. However, what you always need to remember is your marketing on borrowed ground. It doesn't belong to you. This isn't your platform. And as you know, if any anyone listening has been doing social media for, well, feels like the last five minutes, but literally <laughs> the last year or two, you'll know it's changed massively. The reach has changed, the, the engagement's changed, and because we're not in control of it. So for me, as amazing as it is, and still use it as a tool, but you really do need to get people off. I've got a great but awful example of um, 
Um, Ooh, I love awful examples. And, and, and the friend who came to me and was like, she had built her business and she'd built it using Instagram and she'd got something like 240,000 followers and her business was an online art program for kids. And in, her Instagram was just perfect. She'd got such a good keen following, super engaged. Someone hacked into her account and wiped it, like literally clean. Oh, off no. Her. She lost every one of them oh like and the, uh, she was really upset that she lost all those followers but she was also more upset that she lost all that content that she'd spent all those years doing and she had to start again and build it again and try and connect with these people again and remind them and tell them i'm now over here because my account just disappeared off the face of the earth so for me even if she'd had five percent of those people on her email list then that would have been a bit more of a bonus than than having none so you've got to think about how can you take them off and put them onto your own email list because you own that. That belongs to you. No one can take that off you. It's not to say, though, once they're on that list that you then ignore them on social media. Not at all, because you put stuff out there and the chances are they don't even see it. So you've got, I don't know, if you're lucky, a 30 percent open rate on your emails. You've got organic reach, which is one to two percent of the people who follow your page. And Therefore, even if you were doing everything on every platform, the chances are they're still not going to see it all. So you've got to give yourself as many opportunities and as many options as possible. And bringing them onto your email list is just doing that. It's giving you another option. And it's funny. I mean, we, so our company, Hippo Direct, we're second generation family business, and we specialize in helping you find new customers through mailing lists and email lists. And yeah. so you'd think, you'd think as a company that works with mailing and email list partners that we'd be all about purchasing lists and, and, and that sort of thing. But even us, you know, we still say that the best email list you can have is one that you're building yourself Absolutely. and one that you're, that in, in one that you're growing through people, you know, your fans and customers that you know are interested in, in what you have to say and what you have to offer. But it is a huge challenge to actually grow that email list. And it yeah. takes years and years and years. Uh, my dad, our founder, talks about how, you know, one of his regrets is he wished, you know, he could have started getting people for an opt in email list 15, 20 years ago, but he was really late to the game in that respect. So, what is your favorite way and what you feel is the most effective way to actually grow your email list? So for me, uh, I have to start with something super important that lots of people, I think they think they know, but in usual cases they don't, is they've got to know their audience so well. You've literally got to know exactly who your people are that either you're trying to attract or that are following you. Because if you don't know who they are, this next step is going to be going to be no use to you. But basically, when you know exactly who your customers are and what they want, so go and ask them questions. I've done things where I've invited people on a Zoom call with me and I've recorded that Zoom call and I've asked them stuff. I obviously post in my groups and I post on social media and I encourage people to come back and say what they need help with. But you have to know them super, super well, because then what you're going to do is you're going to offer them something they need or want for free. Now, I don't mean a product or some of your service necessarily for free. I thought you mean I'm, like cookies or pie or something. I mean, that would work really well if I'm honest. I think so. I think we just unlocked the secret there. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you want to build your list, cookies and pie are the way to do it. <laughs> so you, you've got to give them something that is, and if you're in the knowledge industry like I am and, and we are, where you're you're trying to share your knowledge with people, that's so much easier. If you have a product, then things like competitions, discount codes, they're still good lead magnets. But you're basically offering someone a lead magnet. You're saying to them, listen, I can help you with this thing. And here's some help, but you need to give me your email address. And the thing with it is, if you're giving them something that is really specific to what you do, you know absolutely without doubt they are a potential customer for you because if i'm giving away so one of my lead magnets i have at the moment is 10 things to do in 10 days to get more engagement and more more reach and get seen by your prospective customers so i've got that lead magnet out at the moment so if someone downloads that the chances are 
they want to hear more about what I've got to say. I've got another one out on how to do webinars and again, and how to build your email list. And again, if someone's downloading it, you don't download those sort of things just for fun. You know, you download them because you are either a business owner or a marketing person and you want to be able to improve your business through marketing and therefore they are definitely a customer for me. So make the freebie one really good, like, you know, your best stuff. And people don't want big, long things, not necessarily, not the first step. If they're brand new to you, you need to warm them up a bit through perhaps just seeing your posts. And then when you do offer them something, make it quick and easy. Give them five quick wins that they can do tomorrow that are going to make a difference. Don't get me wrong. People do need magnets of massive eBooks and, you know, big, long series of things. However, in those first steps, actually, like I said, they literally just need one or two really quick wins that will then go, actually, you talk some sense. That was really good. And then yeah. they can come back for more. Yeah. It's just overwhelming if somebody, off here's a 600 page book on oh, how to too much. Google. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's obviously way too much in that respect. So when you're looking, so let's say you've put together an amazing lead magnet there you, using the steps that you just mentioned, the key points there. How can you best present this to your audience that mm -hmm. you know so well? I mean, is it just, is it through Facebook and Instagram ads? Is it, you know, what other, what's the best way to get in front of the eyeballs as people say? Yeah. So basically, um, it's an overall strategy in terms of, I do use Facebook ads. I find them really effective. Again, if you know your audience well, if you're using custom audiences, if you're using pixels on your website and you can remarket to them, all that can be really, really helpful. So I do do it through Facebook ads, but you know what I do? I'll advertise it for a bit and then I'll stop and then I'll do it again and I'll stop. But in the meantime, the lead magnets are sat on my website. They're on my homepage. You can see three of them there. We post about them constantly on social media. So you'll find that, you know, every week we're putting, especially on something like Twitter, which is so fast moving, we're putting posts up all the time about it. And what's nice is, don't get me wrong, when you do a Facebook ad, you turn on the tap, which is ace, you know, that's really, really effective. But what's nice is every day I get opt-ins every day. I get someone opting into one of the things and it's just about kind of building them up over time as well. So there's something called a content upgrade, which is basically the same as a lead magnet. However, it tends to go alongside some other part of the content. So let me explain. So I did a podcast at the end of last year talking about how I review my year and how I plan for the following year. So as a content upgrade, I put together a workbook that they could do it for themselves. And I gave that as a content upgrade. Now, strangely enough, I saw someone opt into that just the other day, because obviously it's sat there <laughs> like all the time, because if someone's gone back and listened to an old episode, they might want to do that for this year, let's say. Those sort of things are really good, because like I said, the idea is they just keep trickling in and trickling in and trickling in. You just never know when somebody's going to find something. And that's, no. that's no. part of what's so exciting about podcasts is because I think that some of my favorite podcasts that I listen to in addition to yours and like they're from four or five years ago, the episode, like I'm still catching up from four or five years ago. So think forward, you know what that means for everybody that's doing podcasts now. Yeah, so it's absolutely. just it, really cool. The same thing applies to social media and content in general. So in addition to what we've spoke about, what other marketing tools or approaches are there that or tactics that really convert? What have you seen a, a great return on? So, do you know, I really like to do the, as much as I can, the personal stuff. So for instance, I use a system called Bonjoro. Have you heard Bonjoro. of it? Bonjoro? Yeah. No, I'm intrigued. It's awesome. So what Bonjoro does is it can link up with things like Infusionsoft and various other systems. And every time someone does something and you obviously pick the thing that they're doing, so it might be they're registering for a webinar or they might have just downloaded a lead magnet. And the key thing here, sorry, just to mention is people think when they're starting their list and they're just getting like one a week and they're thinking, oh, this is awful. No, no, no. This is the time you love those people. You are in a position where you have the opportunity to really make those people coming into your list absolutely your biggest fans because you can do more personal things. 
when you're getting 30, 40 a day, you're not going to be able to do this. So, so if you're listening and you're starting your list, I'd highly recommend this. So if someone's downloaded your lead magnet, you can have Infusionsoft talk to Bonjoro and it's an app on your phone and it will alert you and say, you need to send a video to, and it will be the person that's opted in if that's what you've set up. I normally do it for sales. So if someone's bought, I'll normally do this. And it'll send me a little, you know, ping on my phone. And I literally, to camera, you know, hey, whoever, thank you so much for downloading the lead magnet. Or oh, obviously you wouldn't call it a lead magnet. You know, my freebie on how to get more emails. <laughs> that would be an interesting strategy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've just got you in my lead my, my funnel. And now I'm going to try to you. Yeah, real honest way there. Um, but yeah, so like you'd have the video and you literally hit a button and send and it gets sent to them. And Things like that are amazing because people want to be heard. They want to know that actually you're not just another number, that you're not just, you know, in someone's funnel and you're nameless and they don't care as long as you convert. But it's about, like I said, especially in those early days, if your list is small, if you're not getting loads of people opting in, then not only will they become your biggest fans and be on your list forever, but also the stuff you'll learn about those people is massive. And you practice what you preach. I mean, not to reveal all your secrets, but in addition to video, which is crazy personal, and, I, and I'm always blown away whenever I receive an email, I mean, a, a video in a, in a DM or an email, yeah. uh, you, you know, in addition to just doing uh, text messages, I mean, like writing copy, text words, <laughs> let me start over. Yeah. <laughs> in, addition, in addition to just DMing with words, I know you like to use voice message, which is incredibly yeah. powerful as well, just because when you, you know, when someone holds their ear up to the phone and, and hears a voice message directly from you and it's personalized and you say their name, uh, as opposed to just a message what words with which anybody can do and what most people do, it makes such a bigger impact. And I totally agree that person is more likely to become a a fan, a super fan, as Pat Flynn says, a big fan of yours. So that's a, re that's a really, really neat perspective there. And I love doing that. And do you know what? It started out of sheer laziness because I don't even <laughs> like texting. I'm like, I hate texting. So when the voice thing came out on Instagram, I was like, this is amazing. I never yeah. have to text. They invented it for you. And pretty much, I think. I need to message them and thank them. I'll send them a DM, a voice DM. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, appropriate. Like, but like, it's amazing. But like you said, the other thing that's really interesting is when you get bigger and let's take someone like Jasmine Starr, for instance, you know, she's got a huge Instagram account now. She's really, really popular, got lots of followers, lots of fans, but she still personally DMs everybody back. And when I sent her a video message to ask her to come on the podcast, she sent me a video message back. And it's like, People need to see that even when you get busy, and I say to people, it might take me a little while to get back to you, but it will, I will get back to you and it will be me. So if they email me in, because I often, I send out a Wednesday email to my list and I always say to them, email me back. I want to hear from you. I want to talk to you. And I always email them back. So it's that kind of personal stuff. And, and it was funny because Jasmine was on stage once I was watching her and um, she, like I said, she must get, I don't know, uh, 50 DMs a day, I would guess. But only and, one voice message. Yeah, exactly. One video message, exactly. And she was, um, someone was saying to her, you know, well, my account has 100,000 followers. I can't possibly reply to all those DMs. Well, first off, she has a lot. I can't think about 200 and something thousand. So first off, she, this woman saying, when it was a question and answer, you know, I can't possibly do that. Can I get a VA to do it? And she's like, no, just just answer the messages. And she's like, yeah, but, you know, how can I get around this? And she's like, just answer the messages. And she was so adamant. And I loved it because it was like, this woman is totally practicing what she preaches. She totally does what she says. And she's got a huge account, but she knows that it's worth her time and investment to actually do that for her audience because they will love her even more. And she, you know, she actually said, choose something else to give to a VA, give them something else you don't have to do in person, but still do that bit in person. So I just thought that was the best advice ever. And I think it just speaks volume. I mean, it's kind of like a chicken or the egg thing. When, when somebody has a following that big, sometimes it is because they've taken the time and put in the work to be so personal and to really care about everybody that comes across. I mean, some, some of the biggest names out there when you see how they're responding to comments and 
messages to them, it's like they're responding to the first person that ever reached out to them about something. Yeah. Even at that stage. Yeah. And everybody wants that massive following. Everybody wants the huge email lists and all the followers on Instagram. And it's like those people didn't start off with those things. Jasmine Starr did not wake up one day and think, I'm going to post a picture and suddenly get 200 and something thousand followers. <laughs> that Pat would Lynch be magical. Wouldn't it? And if she had a secret that we could follow, that'd be amazing. But people think that they're almost like negative about the people that are on the list. They're almost like, oh, I only got 50 people. And it's like, you've got 50 people. And Pat does this. Um, I'm sure it's Pat that talks about this. You know, imagine those 50 people in a room with you. That's 50 people. That's a lot of people. You know, yeah. when I look at downloads on a podcast, you know, and, and you've had like over a thousand downloads, that's a thousand people that have listened to your voice in their ears. So yeah. honestly, absolutely love every single one of them. It's one of the things I find so encouraging about social media and the, you know, as technology progresses and becomes ever more interwoven in our lives, you know, you hear people talk about how, you know, kind of like the good old days when it was all face to face interaction. And now everything, you know, everybody's just spending time on their phone and not as much face to face. But it's really comforting the fact that you can still be so personal and still have such a personal touch through these tools. And that in in a way, it's just it's connecting people that previously would have never been able to connect. So I think it's tremendous upside there. Honestly, that is my most favorite thing. So I've got two uh, examples for this. One, obviously Ooh. I'm here in LA. I've been, I'm here for two weeks and my daughter is with her dad and she's nine. She's a little girl and I'm leaving her for two weeks and people think I'm the devil, I'm sure. But, um, but one <laughs> no, of the reasons no, no. I can is because I can speak to her and I can FaceTime her and I can see her. So that's amazing. The second one is um, I did a TEDx talk and I was trying to think about how I could, because mine was very positive about social media and how amazing it is for businesses. And one of the things I talked about was how I had connected with this guy who lived in the Cook Islands. And this guy called Tony and I started following each other because we saw we liked the same things and he commented on a couple of things. And we ended up becoming, you know, quite good social media friends. And I I messaged Tony and said, listen, Tony, I'm doing a TEDx talk. I want to talk about how brilliant it is that you can connect with people that you would never have ever met. Would you mind sending me a video from the Cook Islands and I'm going to play it in the TEDx talk? <laughs> and I did. And the audience just loved it. But he's like, you know, hey, hi from the Cook Islands. And I literally said in the TEDx talk, I didn't even know where the Cook Islands was. The Cook Islands from the UK is literally the other side of the planet. Wow. And it's this team tiny dot in the ocean there is no chance on earth tony and i would have ever ever had a conversation had it not been for social media and i just think that is amazing i think that's like you said people think that the technology we have today is putting everybody further apart because they're looking at their phones and they're not interacting and that sort of thing but actually if used in a right way it's putting the whole world so close together i can't tell you i think it's just brilliant yeah, I completely agree with everything you're saying. I also now know at least somewhat where the Cook Islands are. So thank you for that. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, I did have to Google it. I hadn't got a clue. <laughs> I, I have to Google it again. <laughs> so you finally decide to start a podcast. Congrats. You've never been more excited. But wait a sec. You quickly find out this is way more of a time commitment than you initially thought. You're going to need someone that has you covered behind the scenes. That's where I come in. Email me at max at hippodirect.com and let's get wild. So let's switch gears a little bit. Let's get into a segment on inspiration and creativity. So think how you stay creative, how you stay inspired. So Teresa, what do you do to stay creative? So for me, I think... Uh, you know, I just eat, sleep and breathe what I do. Like, I love it. If someone serves me an ad and it looks like a lead magnet and a funnel, I'm in it. Like, yeah, I'm downloading that thing. I'm checking every stuff. I'm screenshotting their pages. I'm looking at what they're doing. So for me, I find it fairly easy in one way 
the stuff that helps me be creative is the face-to-face stuff, the doing lives into my Facebook group, it's standing on stage. But then I guess the other stuff I do is I read a lot. I listen to books as well. So I constantly inhale stuff and podcasts. And and I just think, for me, again, like, look at the world we're in now, that I can get ready in the morning, do my makeup, learning. Like, that is nuts. Yes. And it's, it's literally amazing, flying right? through the air. <laughs> it's like sound waves flying yeah. through the air, hands free. Honestly, it's just brilliant. And it's like, whereas I hate wasted time. So, you know, if I have a car journey to do, if I'm, you know, on the plane or whatever, that I can literally read a book or listen to a book or just take in all that information. So for me, like I said, I watch what everybody else does and I try and learn all the time. I love your word inhale. Because that is some incredible imagery, but it's true. I mean, there's so many ways to soak up content these days. I mean, you mentioned audio, you mentioned reading, uh, reading in and, and the audio form of reading and audio books and voice and all of that. What are your favorite? Let's go with, let's start with books. Like, what is a book that you've read sort of in the space that has just completely inspired you? And, and when you inhaled it, just it, it it really struck a chord with you in a positive way so i read brene brown's and in fact i'm reading another one of hers at the moment but i read one of her other ones i think it was daring greatly i read i can't remember i get the titles mixed up but she, <laughs> i'm sure she figures you yeah she'll be all right um but she's just amazing and like you know I think often when someone gets to like mini celebrity status, especially in our industry, because there are some huge, big, amazing people, like it must be hard to keep your feet on the ground. And Brene is just like, you know, when you listen to someone or, and she reads her books, which I think helps massively. And you listen to someone, you think, oh, we could so have dinner together. We'd have a scream. Like, I'd love to have you as a friend. She's just the nicest and smartest person. And just, you literally could almost make a quote out of everything she says because it's so good. So, yeah, I love <laughs> yeah. her. She's awesome. And I also, I like to listen to a lot of, like, personal development stuff. I've just finished, actually. I do listen to some slightly crazy stuff. I've listened oh, to tell. <laughs> Gabby Bernstein's Super Attractor, which is all about manifestation. So, I, you know, again, that sort of stuff I'm quite fascinated by. I keep a very open mind and I just take it in and think, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So, yeah, that was really good, actually. I really enjoyed that. But I do like listening to some of these ones and especially personal development ones. I, do, I think that's awesome. And so um, I'm not going to let you say any of the names you just mentioned, but who would you say has been most inspiring to you as a person like who if you uh and i'm not gonna let you say family members either this is good i'm just okay. putting as many constraints as possible on this so yeah, yeah, yeah. Make <laughs> put you in a, in a tiny box no i'm just gonna so if you had to pick pick one person sort of in this marketing or business space that has been just sort of like a a, a real mentor to you whether it be direct or, or virtual who would that be so i think i'd have to say amy porterfield she she said something when I first started following her a long time ago and I thought, oh my God, that's me. She basically talked about how she'd left her job and was working for herself and she thought, great, I don't want a boss anymore. I'm going to work for myself. She started out doing what I started out doing, doing social media and marketing and consultancy for people. And she realized very quickly that you don't have one boss, you have like 17 and <laughs> they all want a piece of you even though they're not paying you full time. And she then obviously turned her business from that one-to-one to to -to one-to-many through her courses and also though she she appeared in a time that was very male orientated and even still now when I speak on stage it's very rare that the women outnumber the men so for me she she came in at a time that everybody needed to see like they needed to see someone show everyone that actually she could do this and she did it amazingly well and when you meet her she's exactly as you'd imagine she's exactly you know we like said we sat and had coffee together it was lovely and she was just like chatting to a friend and watching her it's like if I could pinpoint exactly where I want to be in five years time it's right behind where she is right now you know it's it's kind of she's taken a great path and i'm happy to follow that path that'd be amazing 
she's so down to earth that it's incredible. And you, I haven't had the privilege of, of meeting her yet. Hopefully, 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 probably within the next few days or so. But it's really cool that you have <laughs> got to, you know, meet her in person and have that obviously great relationship with her. But even, you know, yeah. just listening to her and soaking in her, her webinars and stuff from afar, like, I was blown up. Like the first time I ever came across her, I was like, wow, I, like, I feel like I know her. Like, I feel like she's right across the room talking to you. Like it's, she just so down to earth that, that obviously is a remarkable quality that works well for her, her business, but that that's just who she is. Yeah. And I think again, take that as a lead because there are so many people trying to be other people out there. There are so many people thinking, oh, this worked for them if I copied them. There are probably millions of Gary V wannabes. And it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> the only thing that I have got different from everybody else is me. So I am a true believer of this is who I am. This is how I come across. If you like it, brilliant. If you don't, I'm not for you. And there's lots of other people out there that you can follow. And it's not that of course I want people to like me. Of course I want people to follow me and, and want to engage with me, but I'm going to be totally honest about who I am and be very comfortable with myself about this is me. This is how I am. I am. Um, I started writing emails to my audience. I'd done this ridiculous thing, not taking my own good advice. I started building my email <laughs> list, but never emailed them. I mean, what an idiot. Anyway, I had a word with myself <laughs> and was like, well, yeah, that is enough now. And I, um, and I emailed them all and I wrote this email to my list and I said, listen, I've messed up. I should have been emailing you. You've, you know, you're on my list. You've asked to hear from me and I've not contacted you. So I'm going to email you every Wednesday. If that's too much, unsubscribe, not a problem. And I said, them and I'm going to write the emails and if you follow me you know I don't like writing I like talking but I'm going to write them I was going to get my copywriter to write them however if you wanted to hear from her you'd have signed up for her email list so they're not going to be award-winning they're not going to be perfect but they're going to be honest and they're going to be from me and I'm going to be sat writing them and I've had emails go out and I've spotted a typo afterwards and I thought oh damn it but I'm just being totally upfront and honest about it. That's what it is. And I got a great response from it. I was so, so pleased. That's an iconic quote there, I think. Email your email list by Teresa Heath. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just messing with you. But no, but but it is super important. Sometimes it is, is, is the things like that. But the, the key thing is when you did finally email your list, you were so transparent and honest and and, and, yeah. and pers personal about it. So you, like Amy, have that remarkable quality as well of being just down to earth. And I, and I got to tell you, as I was listening to your episodes in preparation for this interview, I had that same reaction to what I had when I was listening to Amy was that uh -huh. like I, I feel like I know you and I've met you before because you're just so down to earth and just couldn't wait for this interview. So you definitely have that quality uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a real honor that you said that. Of course. And so I also want to hit on hobbies. So what do you like to do in your free time when, you, when you're not focused on your business? So I used to joke that basically my hobbies were working and drinking gin and that was it. <laughs> <Didn't do laughs> Cheers. Um, <laughs> Cheers yeah. to that. So, and sometimes I mix both, you know. Um, but basically <laughs> now I think we love traveling. My husband is retiring from the military and has spent the last 25 years traveling the world. And wow. he, since Tim and I got together sort of five years ago, six years ago, I've been to more places than I've ever been in my entire life. And I just love it. We love traveling. We love finding new places. So I guess, I mean, it's a bit of an expensive hobby to have, but, um, but that I do love. And then with all the kind of uh, mindset stuff I've done, I actually really like meditation and I've just started going to the gym, which I think this is the first time I've ever actually said that out loud. Ooh, well, I, thank you for, I for saving it for this podcast. <laughs> it's a bit scary that I've just said that, but, and I'm actually really enjoying it. I've got a personal trainer and, and I just do like one session a week and I'm slowly building up, but you know, to, to maybe going again another day of, of the week, but it's good. I'm enjoying it because I just wasn't doing anything for myself. I didn't have any hobbies. I just worked and it's not good for your brain to, uh, luckily I love and adore what I do. So it doesn't always feel like work, but I just needed something else. So yeah, the meditation and the looking after yourself is good. I also used to cook a lot and then I started my business and I do hardly any cooking now, but yeah, mm -hmm. that would be nice if I had lots of time. 
it, it would be nice if you could add just extra time in the day that wouldn't drain you, but oh. just but just allowed you yeah. to do all the hobbies and things and cooking and everything you wanted to do. But that's Wouldn't that's it? that's wonderful. Congrats on the working out. I know it's it's so hard to, to start that and then it takes a while once you're in a routine for it to become you know a core part of your routine. But I I went through that as well. I mean when I first started working out, I hated it. Just it's 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 yeah. tough and it's tough to finally do it. But now like I feel like I thrive off of it. Like if I don't get that morning workout in, I the, the day is just off for me. <laughs> so and I think so and if you haven't done it, it's so out of your comfort zone. And it was for me, like, I like being good at stuff. And because I do what I do, I'm pretty good at it now because I've been doing it for so long. And of course, I started <laughs> doing, you know, this workout stuff. And I was like, this is hard. And I don't like it. And I don't want to do it. And, you know, can I not do something that I much prefer to do? And yeah, it was horrible to start with. And I'd see my lovely personal trainer and she'd be like, hi, yeah. And I'd be like, mm, yeah. Like literally, don't talk to me. <laughs> what a friendly hello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm just like, literally, like, Ugh, I hate this. And she's like, you hate me, don't you? I was like, I don't hate you. Um, if I could meet you for coffee, that'd be great. But you make me do horrible stuff every time I meet you. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being so horrible to me. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. but kind of on the there's one more point on that. Kind of on the flip side of that, uh, or I guess it ties to it if you're really tired after the workout, but. I heard that you are a big fan of naps as well. And I'm obsessed with naps. So I want to talk about naps. So this is, you know, if you're listening, this is time to hit this news button. But <laughs> naps, <Yeah. laughs> what, 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 what do you like so much about naps and, and how do you integrate that into your routine? You know, it's really funny. So one, I used to think that saying I napped was like the laziest thing in the world until I spoke to Michael Hyatt and he made me feel so much better. But he... Um, <laughs> he has that effect on people. Naps. Yeah, just generally. Um, he talked about the fact that he's had taken naps for years and years and years. But I actually don't sleep particularly well because my brain doesn't turn off very easily. So that's why I did a lot of the meditation stuff and tried to do a lot of the personal development stuff. So sometimes I can have very little sleep, but I'm one of those people that needs my sleep. And I am like grumpy as anything. So normally in the <laughs> afternoon, like if I have, I'll have a bit of lunch and then I literally set an alarm for like 25 minutes to go off because that's the key. It's either 25 minutes or if you then sleep over that 25 minutes, you've got to have 90 minutes because it's to do with your sleep cycles. And if you wake up between 25 and 90 minutes, you're going to feel yuck. So for me, it's normally 25 minutes. I have a quick nap and then I wake up and I feel so much better again. It's awesome. I'm right with you. I and, and I've this is something I've I was huge on in college, obviously because I'm just napped through college. But yeah, <laughs> but since like I kind of had gotten away for it for a while and tried to be as productive as possible during the day, you know, just to try to not miss a beat during the workday. Uh, but then I realized, you know, but there's there were some days that I was just drained, and I was like, you know what, I didn't get enough sleep last night. I really need just a little nap. And mm. when I started doing that, and now it's like a real part of my routine. I start and I do it after lunch, just like you. When I started yeah. doing that, it just really made the afternoons and early evenings, you know, however long I'm working that day, just so much better because you really do feel so refreshed. You're not stressed because you're short on sleep. Like you really, it really, it's kind of funny because it really like divides the day. It almost feels like you're starting a new day afterwards, but it's really, it just helps so much. And I've heard it's good for you too, like uh, mentally oh, healthy, yeah, health wise. <laughs> really, really good, really good. And it's funny, you know, I went to visit an office the other day. I was being interviewed for another podcast in the UK and um, I, I went to their office and they had sleeping pods so that basically they can take a nap oh, in the yes. afternoon. And I just thought that's so, when I think back to the world I worked in and the corporate world I worked in, if you had said to someone, I'm going to have a nap, they had a you know, they would go mad. <laughs> Whereas now they've actually realized that this is a good thing and they should. So yeah, super amazing to be taking that on. And like you said, totally agree. I feel like it's a different day. I've suddenly got a new burst of energy because I think the other funny thing is when you've worked for a business or you've been an employee, you kind of have it in your head. You have to sit at your desk between nine and five and trying to get out of that mindset of if I'm sat here not productive, what's the point of me sitting here is massive. Whereas I would much rather go, do you know what? I'm really tired or I'm not being productive. I'm going to go and, I don't know, sit outside in the sun for, not that we get a lot of sun in the UK, but when we do, um, sit outside <laughs> in the sun. For that one day hour. a year. 
exactly yeah that day i make for most of that day um or i'll take a nap or just something to refocus you and try again there's no point sit not as an entrepreneur not as a business owner absolutely no point just sitting there trying to force yourself to do it because we all know what we're like when we're productive we're flipping amazing like literally <laughs> you can absolutely go through your to-do list like no one's business but when you're not i've spent whole days weeks probably in total of just like half staring at my computer and i've worked all day but i couldn't tell you what i did and it was completely unproductive it's true and no one likes those days when you feel like that but i have a i have a new goal now is to nap for exactly 25 minutes because i've always wondered what the key amount is and uh, 25 seems like a good amount. I know you can't go too long. So that's, guess who's setting their alarm clock for 25 later? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so let's get to a fan favorite segment called the wild business shout out of the week. The wild business shout out of the week. <laughs> wild business shout out of the week. So this is where we talk about a recent campaign or ad, something that caught our attention in the marketing world. And there was something with a man named James that you were mentioning. So I don't want to give away too much. I'll let you tell it. But you mind walking everybody through that? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things obviously that I do really well is I watch lots of people's lead magnets and funnels and that sort of thing. And James has a really interesting way that he opens the cart for his online course and I'm part of James's group. So obviously I, I see this and I've been through it and it obviously worked on me. But um, basically he does a lead magnet, which is a PDF, which is like a kind of quiz that you fill in about are you a digital CEO and are you being the CEO of your business? And then what he does is once he's got people in that part of the lead magnet, so he's done that kind of quick win, he actually brings out an eight part video series and no joke these videos are like 15 minutes long and they are the most highest quality production they're phenomenal they're so well done he's so good in them they give away so much good information so much content but what i love about this is james's course at time of recording i think is about three and a half thousand dollars and then his next level course which i'm in is about fifteen thousand dollars now, no one is going to sign up for something that expensive off one PDF lead magnet. And he's almost saying, if you can't be bothered to watch these videos, then this course and this, this next level stuff is not for you. Because like I said, you can't expect someone to jump from one PDF to three and a half thousand, or it's unlikely they're going to do that. <laughs> There'll be a hell of a PDF. Oh, wouldn't it? Like, imagine. But like bringing in that video series, one, they talked about it and they teased it a lot. So when it then came out, everyone was like straight on it. I remember I was here. It, in fact, it was this time last year and the video series came out and I literally watched the whole thing start to end. And I was like, this is brilliant. But the other thing is he didn't open the cart at that point. He waited a few days, I think something like five days afterwards. So you're literally sat here like, come on, come on, open the cart. Because he's, <laughs> he's told you by then. And you have no idea how much it cost. And I knew it was going to cost a lot. Because again, you think to yourself, you're not going to open the cart for a $50 thing after doing an amazing eight-part video series. So... For me, the whole thing was really well teed up. It was really, the next step felt, oh, that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. Because of the fact of the effort that he put into that lead magnet, he obviously wasn't selling a $50 course. So for me, that was just a great example, not only on how to do a kind of funnel, but also something high end. And to prove that people will sign up online, given the kind of chance and effort. And he also set up a Facebook group for it so he talks about that he does some lives around it in the group you know he really really puts his effort in so yeah he did a great strategy i really enjoyed that and i know we haven't mentioned his last name yet but this is james wedmore and is, he yeah he <laughs> ding 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 uh anyway <laughs> um because he put so much effort in that you know quote unquote lead magnet it just it speaks volumes about how much effort he's going to put sure. into the actual course in the class from that regard. So, so that obviously was highly effective there. Uh, and you also touched on an interesting point that sometimes it's more important to, you know, quote, unquote, like uh, weed out the people who 
aren't interested in what you're offering than the other way around. So yeah, from how you operate your business and how you do lead magnets and everything that you do, what is your favorite way that you make it clear for people whether they're going to be interested in what you're offering or not? I think for me, it's about making it really specific. So it would be very easy for me to go down the social media route and do really general social media-esque lead magnets. And I have done some in the past and I might do some again in the future. But for me, what happened is I got those people on my list. And then when I talked about further on marketing things like the funnels, like the lead magnets, they weren't ready for it. They didn't get it. They didn't want it. And it didn't work. So for me, and I was taking a change in slight, well, very slight change in direction. So at the time of doing the lead magnet, it was absolutely perfect for where I was. But when I wanted to start talking a bit more about this cool stuff, they didn't want that. So I think for me, it's about being really specific and not being afraid that, okay, you're going to hit a smaller audience or you're going to have less people get into your lead magnet. The point is they're going to be the right people if you're making it specific enough. And that's crucial there is that personal and personal and specific, they kind of go hand in hand there, but it, it, it's, it really resonates well with people when you hear something that is so direct and feels like a personal touch in that regard. So it's, it's really neat that you're doing that as well. So let's get to a segment called the unusual. So this is out of the ordinary. So pet peeves, quirks, and weird talents. So what is your biggest pet peeve? Uh, this might be a weird one coming from a female, as people think females can't drive, but people who can't park, oh man, I hate it. Like, it's not that <laughs> difficult. Just put the car in the space. You've passed your test, it's fine. But yeah, I yeah, I hate people who can't park. It really drives me crazy. <laughs> yeah, we were, uh, we were actually, for my girlfriend Dana's birthday, we were having dinner with her parents. At the, at this nice steak mm. place. And right, we were sitting sort of on the sidewalk, and right outside, there was a person who was trying to parallel park in this, uh, in a curbside spot. And I'm not kidding, it was about six or seven minutes of them trying to park. Oh, <laughs> no, isn't so I've, I've obviously. Just want to go I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. We're like literally like the, the waiters and waitresses like stop what they were doing just a while. Like everybody, it was like, uh, well, well, I guess it was like watching a train wreck, but it was like people just were, could not believe what was going on there. And then ultimately the driver said, screw this and got up and left. But it was oh, like, just, oh my God, but it was just like, they wasted almost 10 minutes there. <laughs> yeah. What a nightmare. That's so funny. <laughs> How about quirks? So what's something that maybe your daughter or your husband or one of your friends calls you out on that's a little bit quirky about your personality? So this is so embarrassing, but I, this is going to sound really weird. I clap at the telly, right? I know this sounds super strange, but you know, when someone like does something, so if you're watching, I don't know, something on TV and it's a talent show and everybody's clapping, I will clap along like, oh, that's brilliant. That's wonderful. And like my <laughs> husband looks at me like, what is wrong with you? Why are you clapping at the telly? And it's like, they did really well. I'm really impressed with what they've done. Like, yeah, so a little bit strange. Oh my God. Well, I, I applaud that answer. So thank you very much, thank Teresa. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's hard not I'm to get into it. Involved. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And then how about weird talents? So in addition to clapping like the best of them, <laughs> what what other talents do you have like something something that's something that's really weird and really it doesn't have an impact on your business but it's something like it could be a memory trick it could be something you know like maybe you're good at drawing things like something random that you're really talented at <laughs> so again i picked out all the really weird ones for you hey this I is can... what this section is for <laughs> <laughs> i have uh really is ambidextrous with the right word feet so i could pick things up with my feet really easily oh wow and my husband and just looks at me like what is wrong with you you need to like stop doing that but honestly if something's on the floor and small i can pick it up with my toes and hand it to myself yeah I can know. you clap with your feet as well yeah i probably could I, see that i should mix those two up shouldn't i <laughs> there I we mean, go you really really have your husband spinning <laughs> you'd be like what are you doing but yeah that's <laughs> excellent i'm gonna do that next time <laughs> that comes in handy what what how has that come well, I'm, I'm guessing that comes in handy. <laughs> yeah, has, that, has that come in handy for you in any situation? 
Yeah, it's like a laziness. So like, you know, you drop something under your desk, drop a pen, just don't even have to bend down, reach down with your foot, pick it up, pass it to you. Like, wow. <laughs> You're just the most efficient person I've ever heard. <laughs> well, I, yeah, like I said, everything I do is for that laziness. It's like, there's got to be an easier way of doing that, surely. <laughs> All right. Well, because you're so lazy, we're going to end up with rapid fire questions. So, you know, shorter questions, answers. here. So rapid fire question. Do you think you're ready for it? Okay, let's give it a go. All right. Let's get wild. Who is your favorite musical artist of all time? Oh, uh, I'm going to go with a really old classic. I really like the Beatles. They're amazing. I actually I haven't heard I, of that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, they're no, they they're amazing. I remember, I remember a few years ago at this point. I remember how excited I was when all their stuff finally came to Spotify, and I was like, "Oh my god!" It's like you got new yeah. new Beatles new new Beatles music all over again. Okay, how about what is your favorite app on your phone that is not a social media platform? Uh, 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 let me think. Uh, we have. Um, live 360 so i can see where everyone in my family is so i can see where my wow. stepson is and my daughter is and my husband is so that's probably one app that i look at a lot especially when my husband was traveling and i could see when he had landed and he was safe and that sort of thing so yeah that's an app i look at a lot is that kind of like it is it kind of like find my phone like it just it, is, yeah. it tells gps location yeah it's find my friends but it does more so things like it, some really cool features it'll tell you like what sort of um what they've done beforehand so he went from here to here it took him that long to get there if they were driving it tells you the speed they were going at and stuff and yeah oh my God. It's, really, <laughs> it's a it's a little it's, it's a little big brother but that's impressive stuff <laughs> uh, sure and things like it can alert you to say someone's left the house or come home so what's actually quite nice again because we're over wow. here my steps on home because he's 16 maybe 17 and then and we obviously get an alert like oh he's just arrived home good that's he's safe that's good so yeah it, i yeah we look at that a lot as a mother that's got to be a, a, an incredibly oh. valuable app yeah and with my husband being away to be able to see when he's landed and and some of the places he goes were not the nicest places in the world so yeah right. very reassuring that i can see them and if you could imagine a world kind of opposite of what we have now where there's you know every movie and show is at your fingertips Imagine a world where there was only one movie in, and anytime you wanted to watch a movie, you had to watch that one movie over and over again. What movie would that be? It would be Love Actually. I love that film. <laughs> actually, you do. How about food? <laughs> How about if you were stranded on a deserted island, but it's not actually deserted because you could bring one food item with you and you had an endless supply of that food what would that be uh i'm gonna say a potato because you can do lots of other things with potatoes and cook it in different ways and i just Ooh. love potato true yeah very very it's versatile basic, but i do love it <laughs> and if you were not living in the uk where would you be living here in la love it love it <laughs> i guess you are literally in la right now so that. Literally, LA, right? <laughs> put your money is where your mouth is <laughs> the city of dreams and angels or i can't remember all the nicknames but anyway <laughs> so Teresa, i know we got to wrap up thank you so much for coming on the podcast and for not taking a 25 minute nap during this episode and just sharing all your amazing <laughs> secrets just you're, you're just such an incredible person and absolutely love what you're doing so so thanks for coming on thank you max it's been an absolute pleasure to be on Yes. Yeah. My pleasure as well. And so where's the best place for people to connect with you? So they can literally just search Teresa Heath Waring on any social media platform and you will find me, but I'm most active on Instagram and Twitter. So you can come and find me there. And my website is TeresaHeathWaring.com. Perfect. And Heath Waring, for anybody that's not familiar, is H-E-A-T-H hyphen W-A-R-E-I-N-G. Did I get it? Did I get it? That's right. Well done. All right. I've won the spelling bee. All right. All right. And last thing here, final thoughts. It could be a quote. It could be a line. It could be a, a joke. Whatever you want. It could be a, a trick you can do with your feet. Uh, we probably can't do that. But <laughs> anything you want. Send us off here. The stage is yours. 
Okay, so it's something that Brene Brown says, and she's like, basically, unless you've been in the arena fighting the fight, then you don't have a say. So if someone at the moment is shouting from the sidelines, telling you you can't do it, or telling you you're not good enough, or you're not whatever enough, then unless they're exactly in your shoes and they're fighting that fight, they don't have a say. So don't pay attention. But do pay attention to Teresa as she is brilliant. Thank you, Teresa, for coming on the podcast. And thank you, Wild Listeners, for tuning in to another episode. To make your wild listening experience easier than ever, make sure to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite app and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts to help spread the word. You can find show notes, transcripts, pictures, marketing resources, and more at hippodirect.com slash blog. And you can also check out hippodirect.com slash newsletter. That newsletter is the Hippo Digest, and it's your place for wild marketing ideas every single week. And of course, come join the conversation on social media at the handles HippoDirect and Max Brandstetter. Until next time, let your business run wild. Bring on the bongos!